In Node.js, before we get started working on our project, we have to go through a configuration step to set up things like linting, formatting, and testing. Dino saves us a ton of time by including these tools natively. Let's take a look at what's included with these built-in CLI tools. Here we have a function called sing. All sing does if we run it is it says la 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 because we've passed in this phrase and the number of times we want to call it. Now let's make some adjustments here. We're going to tighten up our code a little bit. Let's say we're going through a refactor step, but I get a little negligent in my refactoring and I add some spaces where they don't belong. Running Dino FMT will format the file and it's going to run it on the entire directory. The formatter even works on code blocks in markdown files. So if I use the triple backticks and I place some code in there and I run the formatter, it's going to recognize that it should run it there. So that's pretty magical. The formatter automatically formats your code to follow Dino's rules and conventions. So let's go ahead and try this again. We're going to go back to our sing function and we'll go back to how this was. We will replace const this time with let. Now let's try running another built-in CLI tool, the linter. The dino lint command is used to analyze your code for any potential issues. It's similar to eslint, but it's built directly into dino. So let's run dino lint. It's going to let me know that this is flagging the prefer const error. Because song is never reassigned, we might as well use const here. So this will let you know what's going on. It'll also take you to the documentation over here that explains the rule if you need any more detail. So this site lint.dino.land is going to give you a rundown of all of the rules and their explanations. Now, before you even run this, you're going to see a little squiggly line if there's some sort of violation of the lint rule. So in VS Code here, you can go to the problems tab, and this is letting you know that there is a Dino lint rule that you are in violation of. So it's possible to run this on the entire project with Dino lint. It's also possible to run this on individual files. So we could say Dino lint sing.ts. It's possible to run it on a directory specifically. So if we had say a source directory, we could pass that in that way. And if at the end of the day, you're feeling like this is a rule that you don't wanna follow, you can add to the top of the file, dino lint ignore file. And then if I run dino lint again, it's going to skip over this file because I've added this to the top. Dino also has some CLI commands for testing. So let's go back to our original here, our cleaned up version of Sing. And we have a test already written here. So we need to export this function in order for it to be tested. Now we can run our test with Dino test. And this will say that it's running that single test and it's going to say that it is passed because we're expecting if we pass in woo, the result will be woo woo woo. You can also run dino test dash dash watch. And this is going to watch for any changes to our file. So I could say, try this again, but this time call the function with, hey, we wanna save that because the assert is not returning the right thing. Then I'll know that I need to change it here too. And it will always watch to make sure that it's getting the latest data. The way that Dino decides which files should be considered test files is that it follows the convention here. So we have sing.test.ts. This would also work if we use sing.test.js or sing underscore test. Let's try to run Dino test again, and that will work it will consider that a test file. Of course, you can run individual test files directly. We could say dino test sing underscore test dot ts. That's useful if you're just trying to run a single file versus a bunch. You can pass a specific directory path like dino test dot tests, something like that. 
You can even check code coverage. So by default, when you run Dino test dash dash coverage, a coverage profile is going to be generated inside of this coverage folder. And then once you've done that, you can run Dino coverage and that's going to print your coverage report here to the standard output. As you can see, Dino's built-in tools are pretty cool. We don't have to spend a whole day or longer configuring these tools before we can get started working on our projects. And we can format lint and test without incorporating third-party dependencies.